Hi, this is Tim. In this lesson, we're going to continue working with our linear motion control trainer. In previous lessons, we have interfaced our Allen Bradley Compact Logix PLC with our Yamaha servo drive, and we've made some manual and auto functionality for it. So if I switch switch forward to the left, we can see that our servo is enabled now by the blue light, and we can run it back and forth. We also made an auto mode, so if I switch it to the right, it's going to come over here, and I press the green button to start our cycle. So it's going to move out to 100 millimeters, and just to represent it doing something, the yellow light comes on for one second, and then it shoots all the way out to eject apart, and then comes back and it's ready to do it again. And we've done all of this without actually opening up Yamaha's software. And that's what still amazes me about this. So let's have a look at what we've done. This is our Studio 5000 program. And down here we have added a generic Ethernet module for the Yamaha TS-SH motion controller. And then we have done all of this in one single add-on instruction that we downloaded from Yamaha's website. And we've made lessons of all of our steps on the way. So if you're coming into the middle of this series, look down in the description. We'll have a link down there where you can find all the lessons. But I did purchase the Yamaha software and a programming cable. So I figure we ought to have a look at it. So let's go to yrginc.com and then I'm going to mouse over the my YRG. Now let me let me open this in incognito just so you can see what you're going to see if you have not registered. Is it looks almost the same but when you mouse over my YRG, you just get login or join now. Well, it's completely free to join. So just create a login and once you do, yours is going to look like this. And right here we have software. And right at the top we have, well, we have RCX Studio, which we have played with this with our Scara robot. That's our first two entries here. And then right below we have TS Manager software for the TS-SH Trans Servo controllers. And that's what we're gonna download. So I'm gonna click it and go ahead and download it. And when it's finished, we'll go ahead and open it up and we'll go ahead and install it. It looks pretty straightforward. All right, that seemed really easy. So now if we go to our start menu, uh, right there, there it is, TS Manager. Ooh, they have a motion simulator. All right, we're gonna have to play with that probably. Okay, we're gonna open up the TS Manager. And okay, it looks like we have a really easy backup to start with. We can transfer data from the controller to the PC or from the PC to the controller. But we're gonna go ahead and launch TS Manager and we will start a new connection. And okay, we do need to go ahead and plug our COM port in. And okay, we do need to go ahead and plug our serial cable in. And it looks very similar to a lot of the round connectors that you see. And I do have a plug right here, so I'm gonna unplug this. And oh, okay, as soon as I unplugged it, I did get a fault. So we'll probably have to look into why that was. Plug this cable in. Oh, okay, and the fault goes away. So apparently, you either need a programming cable in or you do need this connector, and that's good to know. So don't discard this connector. And plug this into our laptop. Okay, and I hear a bunch of singing from the USB plug-in thingy. So let's go to our start menu and go to the device manager and Okay, we have other devices here. Okay, well, we need a driver, and in typical Tim Wolverine fashion, I dive in, I went as far as I could, and then I decided I need the instructions. So it did come with this USB thumb drive, and I'm betting that this has everything that we need on it. So let's go ahead and plug it in. Okay, and sure enough in here, well, when there was the file, so it was, we probably didn't even have to go to the internet. We could have just got it right here. And there is probably the instructions to do everything that we're trying to do. And mainly right now, there are the cable drivers that I need. So let's go into there. And cable set up. Let's open it up. All right. Okay, install, install in the driver. And we have Windows 10. Download the latest version of our website, plug in the device, go to the device manager, 
And yes, it is showing up as other device. And then we want to do the update driver and we're going to browse to the driver folder. Got it. So we're going to go to the device manager and there it is under other devices. Right click update driver and we're going to browse and then we'll navigate to those files. I'll put right here. And actually, even then, usually as long as you have the include subfolders checked, that's probably far enough. All right, and it says it's installing some drivers. And it says it's installed a USB high speed serial converter. That sounds like what we're looking for. And now, okay, it's still not showing as common LPT. Now we have a USB serial port under other devices. Let's see if they said anything about that. And there you go. Okay, so we had to do it a second time. So just right click the USB serial port also and we'll update it. Okay, I must restart my computer for the changes to take effect. Make sure I've saved that. And yeah, I think we're good to go on a restart. So restart. And while we're waiting on our computer to reboot, it's probably a good time to ask you to hit that like button down there and subscribe to our channel. We put out all types of automation videos. Obviously, we're doing a series right now on linear motion control. We've also done a series on the Yamaha Scare robot. That's been a really fun series. We have videos on the basics of programming Alan Bradley, the Compact Logics, the Micro 820, panel views, all types of different lesson series. Okay, we are rebooted. Let's open the device manager back up. And now we have ports, COM and LPT, and right there is COM4. So let's go back to our TS Manager, and we will go ahead and launch TS Manager, new connection, and it is COM4, and we'll just leave that at the default controller one. Searching for controllers. Okay, and ooh, we have quite a bit of info here. Oh, man. I can tell already I'm gonna like this. We can definitely read and write our data and ooh, we can program points in this. You know what I do? Hey, I remember that. In that AOI, let's see, where was that? Yeah, so mode select, when zero is selected, the AOI block moves based on point movement. When it's a one, it moves off the absolute position and speed. So especially if we just wanted to simplify our logic or just didn't want to have to deal with the headaches of figuring out all the numbers in the compact logics, my guess is we can just program them right here. So, and okay, we have our position and I guess this works while we're online. Let's see if I switch this to manual and I just jogged it out some. And yeah, so our position right now is 106.21. And we have a teach button right here. Let's just see what happens. If I hit teach, put current point in that. Yeah. What? Now that was insanely easy to program. And I guess if I decided later on that that point two one doesn't need to be there, I can just take that out. Okay. All right. Well, based off of what we did beforehand, in our auto program, we had a position of zero and we were running fast to it. And then we were running slow to 100 millimeters. So let's just put absolute. Okay, well, one, look at all the options he had there. Absolute. Ooh, we have a merge. And actually, that would be really cool because that way, I believe what that means is you don't have to finish one move before you start the next move. So we'll probably play with that in a later video, but. Just throw a hundred in there. Whoops, that's a thousand. Let's see, and then we went to three hundred. So let's go ahead and make another absolute move of three hundred. Okay, and the only in this move right here was at two percent. Oh, and so you could change your cell and decel, but I don't see a need for us to do that in what we're doing. So it's really in our previous program, that's what we were doing. We were moving to 0 0.0, then to 100, and then to 300. So with that, let's see if it really was that simple to change those. Let's go back to our Studio 5000 program and open up our main routine. So 
So we should just be able to change this mode to zero and make it run off these positions. So let's go online. And for now, let's just disable our sequence wrong. So I'm just going to go here and I'm going to bring down any old instruction and I'm going to double click on the middle of it and type AFI. And that's just going to make it where it's not going to go to that one that's throwing numbers into our position and speed data. So now if I understand right, mode select, I should be able to put at zero and that should make it run to points. Okay, and then we have a move point down here. We're not in auto right now. So we'll need to put switch four in the right position. So I'm turn this around. So when I switch switch four, okay, nothing really happened. See why? Okay, one, oh, well, we need to write this data to the controller. So let's go ahead and hit the write button and caution. We're going to write stuff. And now, okay, and there you go. Just like in the RCX340 software, when it was read, that means that that edit wasn't in there. So now we should be able to go to Studio 5000 and change our point to one we should see this move there we go all right and then point two was a slow move out to 100 millimeters so i'm going to enter a value of two there and yeah it is slowly moving now to 100 millimeters that's pretty neat so if I one didn't want to do the math, or I know I'm always moving from point one to point two to point three, instead of having all that clog in the PLC or clogging my troubleshooting, I can just program those three points in the PLC or just tell it move point one, point two, point three. So that gives us some really neat flexibility. Also, that does allow us to merge moves, which means that we can be moving one speed and for some reason change speeds. So that's a lot of neat things. And we'll probably play with it a little more in a later video. Let's see what else is in the TS Manager. We have parameters over here. And we have an IO monitor. Okay, and here's all of our IO points. So I guess if I press the E stop, and there you go, the alarm here, it went out. I pulled the E stop back out. And yeah, it's back. So we can get a quick diagnostics of all of our IO. Info monitor. Okay, this tells us the exact current position. So if I jog just a little bit, then yeah, we can see our speed. And if we were running to a point right now, it would tell us which point. See current value. So then we have our load factor. It gives us the temperature. This does travel. I guess that is... Oh yeah, there you go. You got an odometer there. And we know the total time that it's been on. So then we got diagnostics, all right, and we've had some encoder errors. That's probably when I've been powering it off and moving it and things like that. And operator panel. Okay, we can turn our servo on. We can turn our break origin search. Okay, so we can do all our basic functions here. So this is a really clean software for configuring, backing up, and troubleshooting your servo system. Now, since I'm a PLC programmer, I still probably am going to do everything in the Compact Logix for most of my applications, just because that was so easy. But it, if you prefer to program it this way, then they've made that pretty easy also. So I hope this video has been helpful. I'll put a link to our linear motion trainer down in the description. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber with TW Controls. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And you two think you'll like these. When you're ready for some intense PLC training, check out our PLC lab. And if our videos have helped you out and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.